Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and yesterday saw the release of Adobe Animate CC19, and this is, uh, I guess we'll call it the artist previously known as Flash. Now, don't let that word turn you off. Flash the player and Flash the uh, creation tool are two very different things. Now, obviously, Adobe knows they needed to rebrand it, so they've called it Animate, Animate CC, but it is still a great vector-based drawing and animation tool, and is getting geared more and more towards generic work, a bit more away from the Flash runtime, and now it does things like publishes to WebGL, it publishes to sprite sheets that can be used in games, and that kind of stuff. So this is very commonly used in the gaming industry for 2D vector-based graphics work and animation, and in a lot of ways it competes with a bunch of different programs on that level. So without further ado, let's jump into Adobe Animate CC19, and let's take a look at what's new. Now first off, if you are an established Adobe CC animator, I apologize. I am not from a Flash background. I do not use Adobe Animate CC, so you're going to see me bumble and stumble through using it. But I just wanted to have something up on screen so you have an idea of exactly what Animate CC is for those people that are not aware of it or don't use it already. And here you can see it running. Now, if you're interested in checking out uh, Animate CC, it's part of the Adobe Creative Suite, uh, which is bought on a subscription basis, 30 or 40 bucks a month or cheaper if you're buying just one application. Uh, but it is definitely a commercial project. But if you're interested, there is a seven day trial, which is exactly what I am looking at right here. Now, um, if you're not familiar at all with this, you can basically think of it as over here, you've got your various different drawing tools and it is vector-based. Now, vector-based graphics are great because they basically allow you to scale to multiple different resolutions. That way you can draw one set of 2D graphics using something like, oh, sorry, uh, for something like the iPhone and then for the iPad and resample, you know, so back in the one we had retina versus non-retina, uh, you could create two sets of graphics and they would be basically identical. It would, you can automatically scale up and scale down infinitely because vector graphics aren't represented by individual pixels, but instead dead by a mathematical formula so they could scale and grow and shrink smoothly. Um, then across the bottom here we have uh, basically a timeline and all the various different nodes in the scene so that you can do animation. We already saw the animation in action. This is controlled by you know moving around this character, the guns having things toggle their visibility. You can see the various different keyframes across the bottom here. And I'm not going to get into an animate uh, tutorial by any means whatsoever, but I want you to have a general idea of exactly what this program is about if you're not already familiar with Adobe Animate. So now what is new in this release? Well, there's a couple of very cool new features. Now, amongst the coolest is this guy. Now, what you can do now is automatic lip syncing. So here we see uh, an object in the scene. Let me just go ahead and select said object in the scene. It's right here, and we can go ahead and press play on this guy, and you'll see he's got lip synced. So there's this audio timeline you see right here, and then there's the lip syncing of his mouth that is done automatically by Animate CC. Now this is done, let's select this guy again. You'll see over here there's this lip syncing option, and what you do is you set up Vis and Memes, so this first set right here of the, the various different mouth poses that are for the different characters, and then the audio, and then it does the rest, basically it will you know, map out, so you, you do your drawing for each different frame that it needs, and then it will sync out to the audio that you select and automatically lip sync for you. Huge time savings if you have a lot of talking in your 2D animation. So that's one of the major new features in this particular release. Another one is their updated, oops, I don't know what I just did. I didn't mean to create it. Another one is basically this new launch screen. So when you first start up and create a new project, there is this nice new creation screen here that brings together all the various different templates, types, designs, uh, sample files. So if you want to load a sample, come on down here and double click it to load that sample. Or you can create a new scene up here. Pick your various different platforms that you want to develop for. So if I wanted to create an HTML5 canvas or Adobe Air application, I could do so here. Um, so this whole new interface for creating new projects is brand new. Now, another major new feature, and this one's pretty nice, um, especially if you come from an animation background where you've been using a program like Spine or, or uh, Sprite or, or Creature or Dragon Book. My God, there's a lot of them. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go in here and create a very simple um, vector object. So that is a thing. It's literally just a thing. There's no hidden meaning on this one. But now what we've got over here is this warp tool. Oh, that's the width tool. Asset warps tool, warp tool. And what you can do now is basically click an object in your scene, 
And what it will do is immediately tessellate a mesh for that object. So now what I can do is set control points within the object. So see, we've got a tessellated control mesh around the object. And I can set various different control points. And as I set control points, it will um, subdivide more in that particular area to give us the, the necessary controls to make uh, movement smooth. And now we can actually use these control points to deform our object. So you can do very smooth, organic operations using this setup. And obviously you can use this for animation over time. It opens up a world of new opportunities for doing things like, again, smooth organics, like bending of a finger or the flapping of a cape or, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so this lattice-based deformation is definitely a cool new feature. And that is kind of scratching the surface of what's new in Animate CC. Now, the nice thing is... Um, there's a whole lot more behind the scenes, and Adobe does very, very good um, release notes. So I'm just going to skim over the top level stuff here. Uh, but the nice thing is you can come in here. So we already covered auto lip syncing that was just added to uh, Animate CC. But you'll see if you want to learn more about any of these particular things, there is always a drill down option, generally with a video attached showing you how to use the new feature. So that's cool. Uh, there's now VR authoring and publishing. VR kind of. Uh, basically, you can do stuff like this, uh, superimpose generated 2D stuff over 3D on a spherical background, uh, create movies accordingly that work with uh, various different VR players. Um, asset sculpting, we already saw that, uh, like that. That's the lattice tool I just showed you in action. Um, there is now texture publishing. This is kind of cool for, prefer, uh, for improved performance. So this would be more for your uh, game development type exports. You've got uh, the ability to export this document as a texture, better performance, larger size with some control over it. You can read more about here for exporting those animations out. But basically, that is how you generally get your content out for a mobile app or a different game engine. Um, there's layer parenting and layer effects. Uh, the layer effects include things like adding tints, filters to layers, play with uh, in and out fades, depth of field, and so on. You can make all these changes in a non-destructive manner on the stage. Again, you can drill down for more information on those particular additions as well. And then one of them that's kind of exciting to me, but I have to play around with it to see how proprietary it is to Adobe, is they've added GLTF format. Now, GLTF is the open source WebGL future format. It's normally used in the world of 3D. Uh, that is the way that it's kind of a competitor to like Clada or um, FBX or various other kind of proprietary 3D file formats. Well, Clada isn't proprietary, but that's the whole idea is it's a less complicated Clada so that we can create more um, vibrant real-time 3D type content for the web. Well, they've now got GLTF WebGL GLTF export standard and extended. Um, go in, drill in here. Do be sure to check this out. It goes into the details of exactly uh, what you can do with WebGL, uh, what the requirements are. It is very much a preview feature at this point in time. So you got to run through some hoops to get it to run. It creates uh, GLBL, GL binary or GLTF files for you uh, and the required uh, HTML runtimes and that kind of stuff. So WebGL support export is a very cool feature, but I just don't know at, in its current state how actually usable it is, but that is going to make it so anime can slot into more pipelines coming soon for sure. They've also got uh, players or runtimes for, uh, yeah, players and runtimes for uh, GLTF so you can run it in Facebook feeds and then Microsoft Office, which have both added GLTF support recently. So if you want to create animations for, say, Facebook feeds, you can do so now in Animate CC. Um, Improved integration with After Effects, um, the new home screen, I showcased you that before, and then a whole bunch of miscellaneous changes. And as always, I will link this down below as well. Now, I'm really curious to see amongst my audience how many people are actually using Animate CC. It is um, Adobe Flash um, creator, like the, the Flash professional, was the 2D vector graphics choice uh, graphics application of choice for most professional studios that I dealt with here in Toronto anyways. So the smaller game development studios that were working in vectors, this is what they worked with. Um, and a combination of a few other tools like Toon Boom and uh, the likes. So I'm, I'm actually not up to date how professionally Animate CC is still being used, but this is very much used in professional settings for 2D animation. Of course, there is the price tag attached to it. So a lot of people are going to gravitate towards open source options. And the nice thing is there are a number 
number of open source options. So, and in the vector space, there's not a lot of great ones. Uh, Krita is starting to get some vector uh, functionality, but Inkscape is definitely the big player there. I personally find Inkscape cumbersome to use and slow to work with. Uh, and I myself use Affinity Designer, which is a $50 or $60 program. Still pretty cheap compared to the Adobe suite, but um, still commercial software. Then on the animation side of things, you've got a ton of different options there. You've got things like uh, uh, Pencil 2D, Open Tunes, um, and then 2D bone animation software like Dragon Bones, etc. That you can put all of these things together and kind of get the same functionality you're getting with Animate. But in Animate, you're getting them all there together. And then, of course, you do have that programmability behind the scenes, uh, if especially you want to work in Air. Uh, and keep in mind, even though the Flash Player is going to die off eventually, if you don't already consider it dead, Air is going to stick around. And Air is basically a runtime, just like you know, .NET runtime or Java runtime. So Air applications really have nothing to do with the Flash Player other than the fact that they're kind of a version of the Flash Player. So there are still legs for Flash to keep going. There are going to be uh, demand for ActionScript programmers for many, many years to come. And as an animation tool, it is still very predominantly used. So I'm interested in hearing as a community, what do you guys think of Animate CC in general? What tool set are you using for your 2D animation? Are you going to consider checking out Animate CC or do you already use Animate CC? And if so, what do you think of this new features and functionality and my butchering of Animate CC in general? Let me know all these things in the comments down below. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.